Oh, good morning. It is the morning of day six. A little chilly out this morning. It's probably in, I'd say, 40, 45. This morning it, it dropped down pretty cold last night. So this morning I think the plan's going to be going to make a coffee. Um, I don't think I'm going to check the trail cam yet. Uh, I think I might let that sit another day. Just so if any any of our scents or anything are on that path and they didn't go down because of that. then figure giving an extra day will be alright. So we'll probably go hiking down the original path that her and I went down. Uh, my stomach's feeling much better today. So that's that's a good thing. I'm finally finally feel like I'm back to normal. <clears throat> Eating last night definitely helped. I I feel like I have energy. I don't feel as as drained as I did yesterday. But yeah, I'm going to get Coco her cookies. Her morning treat that she's so ready for. Um, and we'll go from there. Drink my coffee down by the river. As I do pretty much every morning. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see where the day takes us. Alright, see you at some point. I, every morning I, you know, make my, make my bed and clean Morty out from the night before that type of thing and without fail every morning the second that I am done making the bed and sweeping out the the carpet in there and everything this one decides to jump in on there with her dirty feet I, I just swept I, I just I just did this what, what, are you, what are you doing to me dog Oh, it's all right. You're a good girl. I love that Coco Bear. I'm talking about you. Oh, cockhead. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? I don't think you can cock your head anymore. I don't think you can cock your head anymore. Pretty dog. You're a pretty girl dog. Yeah, you're my baby. Oh, her wants some loving. Is that enough? Yeah, that was enough for you? Alright, you go get your bear. She can go suckle her bear for a little bit. All right, I just had to share that. Whether it makes it in the video or not, I don't know. But that's my Coco. All right, I think I'm going to... Uh, might actually put our boots on and go for a hike a little earlier. Um, seeing as this day six out here, I pretty much sat and listened to it as long as, uh, you know, not that I'm getting tired of it. Not by any stretch of the imagination. I could do this every day for the rest of my life. But. I think. Uh, yeah. Go on an earlier hike. Go on a morning hike. And maybe we can go on one this afternoon. Maybe try and find a different trail. Or go do some exploring. Or something. We'll figure something out. Or just take a nap. I mean, that hammock. That hammock over there is just sitting there calling my name. It's all I hear all day. It's all I hear. Hammock, come lay with us. Alright. I'm going to figure something out. If we decide to go on a hike, I'll, uh, 
I'll pull you out and show you where we are. If there's anything, well, I'll still pull you out and show you. If anything jumps off, you know, you'll see it, hopefully. Unless it's a bear, I might be scared shitless and run away. Although it probably would have ran away long before I did. All right. That's it for now. All right. So came out on the trail a little early. Brought my coffee with me. Figured uh, maybe a little earlier might uh, bring our chances up on seeing a, a moose. I don't know. Didn't do any research, of course, but I believe they probably bed down like deer during the during the day. But again, I don't know. So in the morning, if they do, in the morning and the evening hours would be the best chance to see one. Did remember remember to bring my pistol this time, just in case. Again, I'm trying to shoot a moose. But if it's a moose, or me, or a moose or my dog, I know wildlife, you know, my dog isn't a priority, but to me my dog is a priority. Of course, I wouldn't aim at it to start with. I'd definitely do a warning shot first. And then if he kept it coming or hit one of us, then yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to light him the fuck up. Now that probably won't make it in the video, but it will forever be in my records. <laughs> it's a beautiful trail though. Let me flip it around here for you. Oh. Coco marks it as hers. Oh, any moose out here, they, they better know. It's this this Coco's now. <laughs> At least that spot is back there. I obviously try and make it so I can see as far up the trail as possible. Because, uh, more than likely we did run across one it would uh, probably dart off well maybe I don't know you know my dog she's a little orange dog she probably be taken as a coyote <laughs> I mean they're not that far off <laughs> So the moose might take it as a, a threat of some kind and try and stomp her the fuck out. But, you know, I went in Maine. If I ever had a chance of seeing one, this trip is it. I, uh... kind of like to rather see one in the wild than on the side of the road. I've been, a, been in New England now for almost three years and still haven't seen a moose. Some of which time I was in Mexico, Maine and we went to Rangeley. I've, I've went to all the places where people tell you to go to see moose and, and I still haven't seen a fucking moose. <laughs> I'm not bitter. I just want to see a moose. And as much time as we spend in the woods, granted, I don't think there's a large moose population by the house. I mean, we are out in the woods, but I'm not saying there's not any out there. It's just not a large population, would be my guess. Those are definitely some fresh tracks. All right, I'm going to uh, Coco, Coco and I are going to continue down. 
if I see anything, I'll definitely say something. I do have my meta shades on, so if I can only get a quick, quick glimpse of it, I'll try and capture it on that first before I reach through in my pocket and grab this fucker out. Alright, we're going to continue on. It's, uh, this trail's about three miles. So it'll probably take us probably about an hour to get to the end at a at a stroll. Plus I like to stop and drink my coffee and pet my dog in places, so it can take a little longer. Alright, talk to you soon. Just came up to this clearing up here and heard something in the woods. I believe it was a deer bed down that we startled. I didn't really get a good glimpse of him, but it, it didn't look, uh, didn't look huge. And the way he kind of pranced away led me to believe it was a deer because it, it did kind of dump, dump, like he was taking jumps. But it was right over there, just in the tree line. I came across this awesome maple tree that is in the midst of its color change. And it's got every color represented. It's red, yellow, there's still some green leaves. It's beautiful. It's not going to be a good year for change, as you can tell. Some trees are changing, some trees have already dropped their leaves, it's, yeah. I told the kids about how beautiful the change is up here, and for the, fast, for the past three years, it hasn't been that great of a change. <laughs> One year they'll see it and it'll blow their mind. When the purples and maroons, those are the ones that... When you, when you see a tree that's leaves are pretty much magenta and red and purples. And then splash in the yellows and oranges. Man, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a thing. If you've never seen it, get up here. Just not this year. It's not going to be that great. There's no real way to predict when's going to be good, when's not going to be good. So, I mean... I'm sure there's somebody out there that can, but not me. Well, all right. I'm going to continue drinking my coffee. Head up on the trail up here. If I see anything else cool, I'll let you in. All right. Coconut made it to the end here. I mean, on X does show that it continues on. It actually shows that it wise up here. I mean, you can see it does look like it kind of goes on here. It's just really well overgrown. And it's supposed to head off this way somewhere. But I don't, uh, honestly, <laughs> she knows she gets a cookie when she goes, when we get back. So she's always ready to turn around. She's, she's ready to press forward. If, if I want to go forward, she'll keep going. If I take, if I take one step back, boy, she starts running towards the way home. <laughs> I'll never have to worry about finding my way home with that food hound. So I think we're going to sit here and soak up the sounds for a few minutes. Maybe I might see... Maybe we'll go this way. Yeah, fuck it. Let's, let's see what happens here. I'll leave you guys on. 
we'll see if it it's just like in a little overgrown section here that opens up I really don't feel like doing a whole lot of bushwhacking but I mean this is definitely the way it continues Yeah, no, it's, it's completely overgrown. Actually looks like there's some rocks there to stop people from continuing on and it's all overgrown. <laughs> See, I turn around, off she goes. You coming? You coming, Daddy? Is it time or are we coming? Okay, let's go. <laughs> she would run all the way back to camp if I'd let her. Well, no, she wouldn't. She, she's got to come up and say, You coming? You coming? All right. goes about 30 feet, 40 feet ahead of me and turns back just to make sure I'm coming. Sometimes she'll tag up. Let's see if she'll... Yep. Come on. A lot of times what she'll do is she'll run up ahead like that. She'll come back and I hold out my hand and she'll... Uh, Touch her nose to my hand and then turn around and run away again. I call it her tagging up. Sometimes I'll make her do it. Not, uh, she'll come running up to me and go to run away. And I'll, I'll make her come back and touch my hand. <laughs> so I guess I kind of trained it into her. Did a little research through my, my meta AI here. Uh, when the rut well no first i asked it can moose be aggressive when seen out in the wild and its response was normally no normally they're you know unless you startle them or they fear that they are in danger i'm like okay okay check roger that and then it says except during the rut and the rut Males can be a little more aggressive. So I asked it a follow-up question. Hey Meta, when is the rut? And its response to me was, the last week of October and the first couple weeks of September. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but it is, uh, it is the last weeks of September. In the first weeks of October, I think I said that wrong. <laughs> it's the last couple weeks of September and the first couple weeks of October. And it is officially October 6th? 5th. 5th. 5th or 6th. So, yeah, about that time. So I am glad that I did bring out my, my firearm just for... Just for sits and giggles, it definitely makes me just a little more secure. Not that uh, not that my nine millimeter is really going to do much to a moose. I mean, with some good shot placement, maybe. <laughs> it's a joke. I don't want to kill a moose. I love all creatures. I'm not a hunter. I mean, I I could hunt if. Uh, if I had to, I could get it done. But seeing as how I've got fresh steaks in my freezer and grocery stores are still fully stocked, it's it's not a thing. I, I have considered maybe going out hunting and getting a deer. And then uh, I know this is going to 
I might piss some hunters off, but feed the meat to my dogs. You know, I, uh, I don't care for venison. Um, I've had it a couple times. I have had it good, where, you know, um, a hunter had given us some backstrap that we sliced real thin and turned into a, a stir-fry, you know, which, you know, if you put enough sugary stuff and enough sauce on anything, it will come out bad, good, but... You know, I like just putting salt, pepper, and butter on my meat. <laughs> and it just tastes, anybody that's had it knows what I mean. It's, it's just, it's gamey and it's not, it's not my cup of tea. So, but if I could get out and hunt and maybe, uh, you know, shave a few hundred dollars a year off buying meat for my dogs eh. and trust me my chow hound won't mind she'll eat anything <laughs> well oh another cool thing I just thought of I think I finally got Theodore on camera after trying and trying and hunting this elusive so elusive little chipmunk I think I got him he, uh, he got used to the tripod being out there, and he would, he would come and go, and, and then one time I seen him, um, he left, I went and put out the camera yesterday, he didn't come back, now I'm sure he's got other holes, hell, he might even have other entrances and exits to the hole that he's in that I'm recording, but I didn't capture him. It recorded for four hours. Nothing. Well, this morning I woke up and I saw him go in the hole two times. This time what I did was when he went in the hole, I ran down there and put out the camera. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, I know I caught him at least once. But I'm pretty sure we got them a couple times. So I'm just going to go ahead and let that record for quite a bit. See if uh, see if we don't get some more of them. I'm alright. I'm going to uh, continue down this trail. Probably get to camp. What time is it? Eh, it's almost 11. Eh, well maybe we'll get to camp. Eat a sandwich. Take a nap. Maybe just hang out. I wish I would have brought a book. I don't... I don't know why I didn't bring a freaking book. It's one of the most things I love to do while I'm out in the woods sit back on my hammock, read a book, I'm such a knucklehead, and I know, I know, I've got LTE service, I could download a book, and read it, I, I'm just not big on reading on a phone or on a tablet, I, I prefer to actually have paper, guess I'm old-fashioned this new age fan dangle technology <laughs> although I've always been that way I even when teachers would give us something to read uh, in school that had to do on the computer I just I don't know I my brain just doesn't process it right for whatever reason uh, maybe maybe I'll grab an audio book, but I still have a bunch of podcasts to burn through because I wasn't sure if I was going to have internet or um, cell service up here. I didn't listen to a podcast for almost two weeks, 
and downloaded them all on my phone. So I had, I don't know, 75 podcasts to listen to. So I'm, I'm pretty well covered under that front. Don't know that an audio book would really bring that much of a difference. Oh wow, this segment's getting a little long. I guess I've been rambling quite a bit. All right, we're gonna head back to camp. Um, Coco just stopped and took a peek up here at something pretty hard. I don't know if she got a whiff of something or she didn't sound off. She didn't bark, so it's, she didn't see anything. Although she's partially blind, so she probably doesn't see much of anything. It's so funny at night. Coco does not really care to be out of the camper. She, uh, <laughs> she wants to be inside the camper because I get it. Her eyesight's failing. She's she's definitely losing eyesight, and uh, she likes to be able to see. Well, obviously in the dark, that's 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 a different story. Her her eyesight shrinks even more. She doesn't care for it much. And so she wants to be in the camper. And the first couple days, I left the door open, right? It's it's the middle of, uh, end of September, beginning of October. So there's not a lot of, it's not a lot of bugs. You know, no mosquitoes. So I just left the door open. Well, a couple bugs found their way in. I don't know what they are, a moth of some kind or something. Not that it was that big of a deal, you know. Squish them, throw them out. Last night was the first night that I closed the door and didn't allow her. I mean, I allowed her in. If she wanted in, I'd, I'd let her in and then close the door. Well, then she wants out. Cause she, she's got to be able to see me, you know. If she can't see me. There's a problem. Even with the window open, she she won't lay down. She'll just sit there at the window, staring out at me. So then I'd let her out, and she'd sit next to me and whine, want to go back in. But the problem is, she wants to go in, but she wants me to go in with her. And I don't want to go in. <laughs> I don't mind it outside at night. Yeah. What's going on? So I come over here to Morty to grab my hoodie. It's getting a little chilly. I mean, come on. You notice I, I, I got it covered here so she, she can't get dirt, you know, on the blankets. But she goes for the pillows. And I can already see pine needles on there, you little bugger. Oh well. I love you. Alright, it's the end of day six. Um, Coco ate. I ate just a sandwich and some soup. Didn't really think that was uh, worthy of a time lapse. So I think, uh, I don't think I'm going to do a fire tonight. I think I've got enough wood to last the last couple nights that I'm here. If I don't have one tonight, I did gather some. Not a lot. Um, some people did move in across the way. But, uh, but, yeah, I think Coco and I are going to curl up, maybe listen to a podcast or two, and uh, call it a night. It's definitely, the, the temperature's definitely dropping. It's a little chilly out there. Oh, I hear him rustling over there. I did get some footage of uh, Theodore. So that that's kind of cool. I didn't really... There's, there's large chunks that are going to have to be cut out and gone through. But, uh, 
Yeah, we definitely got him. Well, all right, that's the uh, going to be in for today. I'll pick you up and see you tomorrow.